It is always a celebration here in New Orleans, and we are just outside of the French Quarter at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Atlanta Falcons and the New Orleans Saints. Here we go, the final week of the NFL season. Week 17 is underway. And this carries into the end zone. Oh, good footwork on the spin. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. 22-yard line. him on tape. I think he came into this one thinking this is going to be a big day, and it very well could be, but early in this one, advantage defense. They'll run for the first time with Kareem Hunt. They'll fight forward for a couple down inside the 40. Not a whole lot there. The defense was ready, it looked, for that run pass option. You get the sense the next time he has that opportunity, he may keep it himself and get to the perimeter. Probably owes his back a little bit of an apology on that one, huh? The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. First down marker at the 31. It's third down. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw throw here that's complete and he's going to be stopped here a few yards short of the first as the tackle is made at the 33. Well we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game but it's so important to tackle well on these receivers especially in a play like this one. Third down they gave him the underneath stuff you got to go up and make the tackle right away. So they'll say no to the 50-yard field goal try. Instead, the offense out there, they're going for it. They're going to look to throw. <laughs> shaking his head right after he threw that pass. So what did you see? Well, from a defense's perspective, anytime you have your eyes back towards the quarterback, you're in a position to make a play on the ball, whether it's a big-time play by you or an overthrow by the quarterback. You have a much better opportunity. Second and eight. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Here's Gurley. And he'll be taken down, but not before. 
before he gets <laughs> in the enemy territory. 15 yards on the play, first down. That's his longest run of the first quarter, and Charles, we talked before the game about them needing to establish the run game. They'll be looking for more of that. And they got to the perimeter, so that tells me that that's part of the game plan of what they want to get done today. So they'll have some complimentary runs where he'll run it to the inside, but it appears that when they want the big yardage, they think they can get to the outside and make it happen. Yeah, that one sailed on him. You've got to make sure you give your receiver a chance to come down inbounds because they are very gifted. They'll make the circus catches, but they make them out of bounds. That does you no good. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzes, they're coming a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. They're losing four yards that time, and now it's fourth down. Fourth down. is going to stay out there. They're going for it on fourth and eight. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And they hit him as he throws as this one's going to go straight down to the turf. Incomplete. The Falcons go for it, but it doesn't work out. And the Saints will have the football back. I'm down. The Saints offense on the field, ready to get their drive started. You know, Charles, season winding down, time to maybe look ahead to the offseason. What do you see these guys going after either in the draft or free agency? Well, with the season that they're having, just about every position is up for grabs right now. No one is really safe, but the focal point's always the quarterback position. And he may be auditioning to try and stay with his own current team. I think he's auditioning for the rest of the league to try and find a spot because I think this team is looking for a new quarterback. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Now a shotgun snap as they look to throw. Isaiah McKenzie hauling it in. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 16 yards, a first down. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. On first down, they'll run with Hunt. And this time they were waiting for him as he'll be knocked down before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Brings up second and 10 at the 39-yard line. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Back to throw. Throw left side going to be taken in by Harris. And he works it to the 30-yard line here right at the 30. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as screens in order to get open, that makes things tough for guys trying to get to the football. Give them seven yards on the play as they do pick up the third down conversion. No score after one on EA Sports. No score. On first down, they go right back to Hunt. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. They'll wind up losing three yards here. 
And that'll make this a second and 13. Thank you. Complete, but there is a flag down. So I'll hang on. A big call coming on third down. So instead of fourth down, first down. Well, so much for winning the down you put a lot of emphasis on because third down is key for offense and defense. Instead, you're going to stay on the field and start a new set of downs. up there second and goal it's be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time as the offensive play caller that may change your sequence now instead of coming right back with a running play you may have to go to the air and they'll be driven back here losing yardage to the 10 yard line they lost four there and it's third down this defense is really flown around in the first half they've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started offense got to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going they'll look to throw <laughs> Defense, solid coverage. More problems here on third down. They've converted only once so far in this first half. And you know as well as I do in this league, if you don't win on third down, it makes it hard to win a ball game because then you're relying on your defense, relying on your special teams. You've got to get it done with your offensive unit. On for the field goal, a 27-yard attempt. The kick by Lutz is good. And the Saints are going to take a 3 nothing lead. Man. So the field goal there counts what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the field goal trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? The Falcons take over first and ten at their own 22-yard line. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. And on that last drive, Whitford on fourth turned it over. A good job by their defense, though. They held them to three. But this offense, they've got to be a little bit better, a little bit more careful here. And sometimes when you see these calls on fourth down when they decide to go for it, it's not necessarily the coach saying, I believe in my offense. Sometimes the coach saying, I believe in my defense. I can afford to go for it here because if we don't get it, I don't think we'll give up more than three. And that's exactly what happened. You think that factored in? I do. I think that he had that in his mind going into the game, that I'm going to be aggressive on offense because I know I've got a defense that can hold up their end. 25 yards there on the catch and run. Oh, that was a nice job there. Quarterback and receiver reading the pressure that was brought. They both knew it was going to open up the middle of the field. Nice little shake and bake in the line of scrimmage. Got right into his route. And the quarterback hit him in stride, and he was able to run free after the catch. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Here's Gurley now out of the gun. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Great. No gain on the play there. Second down. No gain. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. At the 50-yard line. They run out of the shotgun with Gurley. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. But if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? 
leverage, athleticism. They created some nice space for him. Looking for a running back, and he's got it. And he'll be taken down at the 44 yard line. That's going to bring up fourth down, only a gain of two there. That's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, short tackle. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Give them credit. They knew what they wanted to dial up on fourth. They executed it for nine yards, and the offense stays out there. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And he will find Ridley. That's complete. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. At the Saints, 32-yard line. Escaping the pressure right. On the run, he'll let it go deep. Right side no. line. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. As soon as I saw him break contain and get outside, my first thought and my eyes gravitated downfield because nowadays, most of these quarterbacks, when they do that, they want the big play downfield. They don't want to throw it short. In this case, he took the shot. It fell incomplete. Fourth down after the New Orleans defense holds serve. And this one looks good. It is good. Right down the pipe. And that will tie us at 3-3. Three, three. So three drives now for this offense, and that field goal gives them their first three points. So if you're an offensive coordinator and you're averaging a point a drive, you're in the wrong line of work, aren't you? <laughs> you got to find a way to yeah. unlock the key to these defenses and put some big points on the board. The Saints take over first and 10 their own 22-yard line. <clears throat> Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. Tie ball game, still a little more than a minute to go in the half. The question, can they put something together here, try to take that lead into intermission? You have to think that would be the goal. Sure. Oh, you sit on anything here. Here's your opportunity. Push it downfield. As you mentioned, it's a tie game. It's like minus a disaster on your part. You've got that in your back pocket. Go ahead and try and get some points and feel great going into the half. So after the incompletion, second and ten from the 22. He'll air it out deep for Thomas. Catches, CD, I know it's just his second year in the league as a quarterback, but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have thrown that ball. No doubt about it, and his coaching staff will be emphatic about he shouldn't have thrown that ball. But remember, second year, as you noted, on the job training, so he's got to take this feedback that he's getting, negative or otherwise, and turn it into positives moving forward. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. As this old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out high. They expected it and got there and popped it free. They run. It's Gurley. And he's going to take this across the 50 and into Saints territory. Look, five yards. Now it's third and five. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as the clock to play in this first half. Could we get a touchdown in this first half after all? It's first and ten. complete to Hamilton and he'll go out of bounds inside the 15 yard line a good pick up there 26 yards down Atlanta
Took nearly the entire first half, but a first red zone opportunity for him here. They have a first and 10 at the 13-yard line. He's inside the 10 and down to the 8-yard line. Here they give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. It's now second and six. Now back to throw. And it's incomplete. Clock stops with 10 seconds left. Hayden Hurst for the first-round pick, the intended target. But now it'll be third down. And six. Saints offense on the field, ready to get their drive started. Time here for likely one play, and then these two teams will head to the locker room all even. And you know the play caller's just feeling it right now. Let's go ahead and go for this one. A big <laughs> shot down. No, no, no. Guaranteed the head coach is like, don't get crazy. Take the knee. Let's get out of here. Tie game. We'll just start all over. They'll indeed try to run it out as they start on the ground. And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. And now a timeout defensively after that first down play. So they're going to make this offense sweat out half number one. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. They'll keep it on the ground again here. And they're going to be waiting for him as they get him behind the line. So we've reached halftime here on New Year's Eve. As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman in our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. The final two quarters of the NFL regular season are upon us as the second half of Week 17 is underway. Now this will make it into the end zone. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line, so bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision, loses him about four yards. Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And hit it hard, haven't we? Because the things to start out the third quarter one play and already a turnover it's interesting you and i were talking with the coach and he talked about how at halftime as a play caller he wanted to make sure he got a new script going for the second half not just the one that they operate off of to start the game nowhere on that script did it have that result three yards on that last carry here's second and seven 27 yard line Hit, uh, and they yeah, do dude. get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. Call that a very strong gain of 24. On first and goal, Gurley. And he gets halfway home from the four down to the two-yard line. From the two now, second and goal. Pick up at two. Brings up second and goal. At the two-yard line. They'll try and push it in with Gurley. Now he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. And now third and goal coming up. The loss on second down. That just means this crowd's going to get even louder. And they'll get a little bit of extra help from the defenders as they exhort them to join them in the effort. Now they'd really like to make the short field pay off. We'll see if they can. But this is third and goal. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Positioning and it's picked off. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, that's three picks he's now thrown in this game. And I know this the holiday season because well, here we are season in December. Of giving. Right, it is the season of giving. Maybe for his own sake after the game, he may have to announce 
and he's donating certain amounts to charity for each interception that he threw. Back to throw now in his own end zone. He'll get this one underneath to Hunt. And he's upended at the six as they double their room to maneuver on a pickup of three. Three yards the game there, second down. The six-yard line. and it's a pretty big one. They get the conversion on third down. So a much rosier picture now after that last play. Here's first and 10 at the 19-yard line. They'll look to throw. He's got his own pro receiver, Michael Thomas. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Saints, first down. First and 10 at the 32-yard line. say keep feeding the horse and I believe he'll eventually reward them especially as we get deeper in the game the run only got a yard here's second and nine looking long for Thomas And I just wonder, because I don't think it's going to rattle him necessarily, but I also wonder if it's going to unnerve him a little bit. Does it lead to another one? Or does he find a way to pull it together and become sharp again? Give him 40 on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Final minute now of the third quarter. Second and seven. Here's a second and seven. A very quick pass to Ridley. The 20, 10. Touchdown, Falcons! Calvin Ridley with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Falcons have taken the lead. And nothing too crazy there. A quick slant, and then he just had a seat. He found a seat. And when you hit it on the run like that, and I mean the pass right to the receiver who's already in motion and moving, sometimes he just takes and runs away from everyone else. And he ran it into the end zone. And the defense, they've got to adjust there quickly. That's tough on them. That's really tough because everything was executed well. Ball was out of his hands quickly, into the hands of the receiver, and then he was caught. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. The 
Saints offense on the field, ready to get their drive started. They are looking to make a bit of a 180. They are sputtering right now. And frankly, I think it's time to call your playmakers together and say, all right, guys, we're going to lean on you through this patch. We need you to get us back on track and get us going in the right direction. Ah, come on. Interception. Shit. Short throw pick six right there. Those linebackers, they love when those short throws come and those eyes get real wide, don't they? How about the anticipation on the play? Reading, reacting, and then the ability to catch the football and take it in the opposite direction. The extra point splits the uprights, and the lead is now 17-3. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Fields it in the middle of the end zone. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. 25 yard line. <sighs> Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. And they gave up the pick six. And now they'll be looking to right the ship here. Now, as a quarterback, are you a little more cautious this go around? You should be, just because after what you gave up. But you can't be so cautious as to just really take things in, and now you're not going to play loose enough to give your team a chance to score. But you still have to be careful, because those defensive guys, I know the reputation defense guys can't catch. All evidence to the contrary on that last possession, though. <laughs> They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. He's going to wind up in there now. And that one incomplete. They try to sneak in a deep ball, but it's like running down. To no avail. It's time to expire on this third quarter. Saints on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This time it's third and three. Looking to throw. Open man is the tight end trapping. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. Excellent play there on third down. Give them 25 yards. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple of scores. And they've really got to get some yards in chunks. And they know the defense doesn't want to give those up. But they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they stretch the ball? Together? And incomplete. A drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring him second down. So we've talked about it, CD, but it bears repeating. They are struggling to throw the football. All the interceptions and more incompletions. It just doesn't look like things are in sync out there. I would agree with that, and it's not a good day when you feel like an incomplete pass is almost a win for you because it wasn't intercepted. And I think the receivers now, when they're running their routes, they want to catch the ball, but they also want to make sure that the defenders don't take it away. He'll take a shot for the end zone. And this is Thank you. So another interception, CD, and it feels like he's starting to unravel a little bit. And as you would expect, still a work in progress here in his second season. He has to start ironing out some of these mistakes, though, because now his head coach, his offensive coaches, they have to evaluate whether you keep playing him, let him work through it, or you start thinking about going to his backup. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Second and six at the 24-yard line. Now it's Gurley. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. <laughs> now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. 
Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Gurley again here on first down. He takes this from the 30 to the 34. Todd Gurley. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. It, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And the 42-yard line here and brought down there. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect him to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. They'll throw this out wide and complete it to Ridley. No gain there on the completion, second and ten. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. They'll try and choose some clock with Gurley. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. The Falcons on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. This is third and eight. And intercepted. Maybe the turning point they need. Kicked off at the 42. And the return this time will go out to the 42-yard line. And that is the play they needed in a two-score game here in the fourth quarter. No doubt about it. They did what they had to do to give themselves a chance to get back into the game. They turned it over to the offense. They are now in charge. Now they need to execute. security terms that have ever been used they come into play for the guys on offense right now just take care of it and they got a good chance to end up winning this game and he'll get up to the 43 yard line the falcons on third down it's been a problem just one for seven thus far they're looking at third in the nose of the football back to the workhorse today it's Gurley. and he's going to have a falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. A play action fake. They'll look to throw. Flush to his right. And he gets this one Ridley complete. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. A gain of 32 that time. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and ten. A quick throw going to be caught by Hamilton. And he will reach the eight-yard line before going out. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. First and goal, they'll try the option left. And now lose yardage here. They go backwards to the 13-yard line. They'll wind up losing four yards on the play. And that'll bring up a second and goal. 13-yard line. That one looks like he'll throw here. And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown number 20 on the year, and the Falcons will extend their lead. Well, there's just about a minute left in this game, and they're still taking it to the end zone, and you know they could have taken a knee there, but they decided to play this one all the way out, and I think their philosophy is, we're going to give you everything we've got, 
If we just go ahead and take a knee now, we're actually showing you disrespect that way, like taking pity on you. They're not about to do that to their opponent. First and 10 at their own 25-yard line. The Saints offense on the field, ready to get their drive started. We certainly had a sense coming in here that these guys were in for a tough one on the road. That has been how this ball game has played out. They trail big as we continue on now here in this fourth quarter. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Up from his linebacker spot, Deion Jones making the play. Ball on the 30, they'll come up with a second and five. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the points that they just had against him. He has just been completely taken out of this game. We're in the fourth quarter. He's single digits in the rushing department. And I know we look at him because the numbers do go to his production. But how about the guys blocking for him? They don't just have his number as a ball carrier. They've got the number of the offensive line and the other guys because they're getting to him before he can get started. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as they get it with just 19 seconds left on the clock. First and 10 at the 41-yard line. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. And that is incomplete. Down to 15 seconds now. The target that time, Michael Thomas. That'll bring up second down. Terrell on the coverage. Here now is second and 10, again for the 41. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that'll be incomplete with 11 seconds remaining now. Looking to go back to Thomas again, and it'll bring up third down. And 10 yards to go. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Back to throw again. Oh, as he throws there, incomplete. For Deontay Harris, incomplete. Coverage by Keanu Neal. They don't care. That hasn't dissuaded them. They're going to go for it on four. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. Open man is Michael Thomas. And we will get a timeout with two ticks left. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. One final shot. They'll look to throw. Would you kiss the freaking ball? They were going for a consolation TD, but it was not to be. And time has run out now on this game. So time runs out. It's a victory for the Atlanta Falcons. And they were booing Charles by a big second half that put this one on ice. So you get the sense that whatever was said at halftime obviously hit home. I think it's a little bit more than that, though. Obviously, there are words that are said, and hey, come on, guys, we have to play better. But sometimes it's just sharpening your execution, sharpening your focus, and maybe doing the things you practiced all week without major adjustments, just doing them better. And that got it done in this one. So for Atlanta, it's an 11th win of the year as they'll finish the regular season at 11-5. And, and now they'll await the final...